Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, Pastor Bodie is not feeling well today, so uh, he'll be uh, in later in a video sermon. So we'll open the service with the open, opening versicles. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
common antiphon. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Ever singing your praise. How lovely is your dwelling place. O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. And the introit. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Ever singing your praise. And we sing uh, hymn 822, Alleluia, yet your praises ring.
And the scripture lessons will be led by Sarah. Our Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy 34, verses 1 through 12. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain that is the valley of, of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I, I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of spirit and wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not risen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and all the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of the, of the confession, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as, in, as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sarah. Would you please rise for the gospel? The Holy Gospel is written in Luke chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went out on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory, glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. And as his, he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and told no, told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and we now hear the choir sing. (laughs) 
the sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars will applaud him with thunders of praise. The sweet light in his eyes shall Choir. We will now sing hymn 912, Christ is our cornerstone.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Excuse my voice. I'm kind of losing my voice here, and uh, so that's why I'm taping this service or this sermon. My sermon text for today is from Hebrews chapter 3. These words, And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast with hope unto the end. Every time I drive highway number 68 towards Mankato, I drive by what I feel is a beautiful home that has been built along that road. I first noticed it because many years ago when I lived in Mattoon, Illinois, and served a congregation there, St. John's, my wife and I had bought a new home. And the architectural lines of that house seem to me similar to the architectural lines of this house that I drive by, just on a much smaller, smaller scale. Beautiful homes are aesthetically pleasing to the eye. As we drive by, I often will say to my beloved Gail, that'll be our retirement home someday, or at least something like that. And she usually smiles and says to me, yes, honey, just like that. But of course, she knows, and I know, that probably will never be. Because she better than anyone knows my finances. She knows I don't have the money to build a house like that. And honestly, I probably would feel a bit out of place, out of sorts, a minister living in such a beautiful home. It would be way over my pay grade. I'm not Benny Hinn or Ken Copeland. But I do like beautiful homes that have architectural charm and curb appeal. Tall roof lines are beautiful, large windows that reach almost to the floor and ceiling, attractive siding, nice landscaping of trees and shrubs and grass and flowers. It's the American dream to own your own home, but it's becoming a challenge, isn't it, to own a new home, some that are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not like when my wife's parents, when they bought their first new home in a growing subdivision outside of the metro, Cottage Grove. Back in the 1950s, a brand new house they bought for a whopping $15,000. Today I joke and I say, that's a doghouse nowadays. And we might laugh at that, but just wait, maybe with our hyperinflation going on, we just might get there. The New Testament often speaks of our community of faith as if it is a house. The household of God is a common expression, even today. I read for you a verse or two from the Bible about that. From Ephesians, these words, Ephesians 2, verses 19 through 20. Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone. And the Apostle Paul writes these words, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Peter wrote those words in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And then Jesus said these words from Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the torrents raged, and the wind blew 
and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. So this is good to know. No matter what kind of home that you might live in, there is a spiritual home even now that exists for each of us, and two, we might add, one that waits for us in heaven above that surpasses every imagination. Jesus, when he sat at the table in the upper room, said to those who called him teacher and Lord, in my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus, like a carpenter, the carpenter's son, is busy at work. As to the evangelist, the apostles, the prophets, as should we. When a house is built, there are things that the contractor knows that will need to be ordered and brought to the site. Forms and timbers and nails and shingles, a whole building list that is accounted for, down to the very drain plug in the bathtub, for instance. I learned from a show that I was watching recently on building a house. The person on the show said, it takes about 75,000 nails to build a typical house. I didn't realize it took that many nails to hold together your house, 75,000. So too, this house of God has its building supplies, its list, items that are needed in the household of God. The first is God's word, taught and preached, honored, held in high esteem. The second is the sacraments, holy baptism, the gift that God gives, that washing of the water and the word, and then the gift of communion, his body and blood given to us in, with, and under the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of sins. And there is too this part of the building supply list, the fellowship of believers, the body of Christ, one another. We all have our role to play. And when we go absent, well, that affects the integrity of the whole. For even as just one missing shingle is soon noticed, and many churches nowadays are missing a lot of shingles, if you will. Sometimes I think as though that wind blew them off. The wind of COVID blew them all away. And who knows where they have dropped. Maybe some lay in the marshes of melancholy. And others maybe in the weeds of wandering. And maybe some lay in the ditches of disarray. I hope I'm not describing you or someone that you hold dear in your heart that is missing from the household of God. Every shingle is needed, so to speak, for the household of God. It's sad to see a house in disrepair. When Jesus was just a boy, his parents lost him. After three days of searching for him, they found him in the temple. And when they asked about it, our Lord answered them with all due respect. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? If it's your desire to be with Christ and in Christ and on the side of Christ, then it's necessary to be in the house that is where he is to be found, in the Father's house. You know and I know it is disingenuous to say, well, God's at the ball game on Sunday morning and God's in the deer stand and, and God's on the sailboat and, and God's on the golf course on Sunday morning. Excuses like that are often very lame excuses 
that we tend to make for ourselves. King David once said at the building of the temple in Jerusalem, this is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. That was the Old Testament house of God, the temple, the ark, the menorah, the cherubim. The New Testament sets down the house of God in the heart of his people. And remember to our Lord's promise that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there is God with them. A beautiful house and home is one in which Christ dwells. As the psalmist has written, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verses 1 and 2. God bless each of you today. Amen. And receive the blessing the peace of God which far surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We now sing hymn 651, I Love Your Kingdom, Lord. take the offering.
We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. The congregation, please rise for the Kyrie. prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the prayers of the church. Uh, they're also written in our bolt, and I'll just go over those quick. We pray for the transfiguration, shut-ins, assisted living and nursing home members, those that mourn loss of family members, Jewel Reimers, Steve Grebner, Buddy Martin's family, family of Phil Rosenau, for those under medical care, Steve Grunhagen, Pastor Ben Rucker, Betty House, we pray for peace in the war in Ukraine and for the people of Ukraine. We pray for missionaries and we pray for the season of Lent. O oh, holy and most merciful God, you have taught us the way of your commandments. We implore you to pour out your grace onto our hearts. Cause us to bear fruit in us that being ever mindful of your mercies and your laws, we may always be directed to your will and daily increase in love towards you and one another. Enable us to resist all evil and to live a godly life. Help us to follow the example of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to walk in his steps until we shall possess the kingdom that has been prepared for us in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we sing hymn 417, Alleluia, Song of Gladness. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now we'll sing.
uh, this Wednesday, 6.30, we'll be reading either in the notes, uh, the newsletter that we'll be doing the Gospel of readings, thanks to Tom Wheeler. So there will be no sermon for the night services. And we have a brunch potluck next Sunday after service. All are welcome, so bring some food. And we'll see everybody there. Have a good day. Stay safe, stay warm, and have a good week. Thank you.